Charge capacitors safely with a light bulb. Why pre-charge capacitors? Here's few reasons why capacitor pre-charging is required. Voltage spike prevention. When capacitors are completely discharged and then suddenly connected to a power source, they can draw a large current in an attempt to charge quickly. This sudden surge of current can cause voltage spikes, which may damage electronic components. Protection of components. Pre-charging allows capacitors to gradually charge up to their rated voltage, reducing the stress on their dielectric material and extending their lifespan. It also protects other components in the circuit, such as switches, fuses, and wires, from being damaged by sudden high currents, especially when connecting a lithium or lithium phosphate battery pack with ABMS to the inverter. The rush of current can potentially damage the battery management system. Safety. Rapid charging of capacitors can be hazardous. Particularly in high energy systems, pre-charging helps avoid electrical accidents and shocks, making the work environment safer for technicians and preventing damage to equipment. Controlled energy release. Capacitors store electrical energy, Pre-charging ensures that this energy is released in a controlled and predictable manner, reducing the risk of accidents or damage when capacitors are connected to the circuit. How does the capacitor pre-charging work? Here is a simple diagram that illustrates what occurs during the process of capacitor pre-charging. As you see in this diagram, there is no resistance between the power source and the capacitor. Consequently, power will surge into the capacitor potentially resulting in component damage, electrical arcs and sparks, voltage drops, circuit breaker tripping, electromagnetic interference, safety hazards. In the process of pre-charging, a resistor is introduced between the power source and the capacitor, effectively preventing the sudden influx of high current into the capacitor. This procedure serves several crucial purposes, component protection, arc and spark reduction, Voltage stability, safety. Here are some images of resistors. Specifically designed for capacitor pre-charging, these resistors are equipped with a heat sink body to effectively dissipate the heat generated during the sudden rush of current. If you frequently make changes to your battery pack or switch inverters for testing purposes, I recommend employing a resistor for capacitor pre-charging. This enables you to establish a permanent wiring solution. This diagram illustrates the fundamental wiring requirements for incorporating a resistor into the capacitor pre-charging process. However, for the majority of us, capacitor pre-charging isn't a routine necessity. In this video, I'll demonstrate a simplified method using a light bulb to accomplish the same task. Since the primary focus of this video is to provide guidance on pre-charging capacitors in off-grid inverters, I've included drawings showcasing the actual product images. This should be helpful for our non-technical viewers as well. You can observe that the inverter's negative battery connection is linked to the battery's negative terminal. Additionally, the inverter's positive connection is attached to one end of the light bulb while the other end of the light bulb is connected to the battery's positive terminal. This setup channels electricity through the light bulb, which functions as a barrier between the inverter and the battery. Imagine the light bulb as a gatekeeper. That prevents the sudden surge of electricity from entering the inverter. In theory, the light bulb and the resistor we discussed earlier serve the same purpose allowing us to use a light bulb instead of a resistor. It's important to note that we only need to keep the light bulb connected for a few seconds. Once capacitors are charged, remove the bulb and connect wires securely for added safety. When connecting batteries with the inverter, consider incorporating a fuse and a non-polarized breaker in between the components. For more details, check the comprehensive guide to off-grid solar wiring. To determine if the capacitors are charged, observe the bulb when it's initially connected. At first, you may notice a faint glow in the filament after about 3 to 5 seconds. This glow should fade away. 
keep the bulb connected for an additional 5 to 10 seconds. Then, reconnect the bulb if you don't see the filament light up this time. It indicates that the capacitors are charged. Now let's check out a demonstration in a real-world scenario. Here's the light bulb I'm using. It's a 230 volts, 60 watt bulb. Wattage can be 40 to 100. I've added a holder for improved connectivity and to minimize unnecessary connections, since the positive wire is already connected to a fuse. It's easy to disconnect the wire from the fuse and link it to the bulb for capacitor pre-charging. As you can see, any of the wires connected to the bulb can be used to connect between the battery and the inverter. As mentioned before, the faint glow in the filament can be seen during the first few seconds and then it fades off, but we hold the wires for a few more seconds to make sure the capacitors are fully charged, then disconnect and reconnect the wire to make sure that the pre-charging is complete. Now, remove the light bulb and make sure to securely reconnect the wire to the fuse. You'll notice there's no spark when connecting the positive cable with the fuse. This lack of a spark indicates that we've successfully completed the pre-charging process. If we had connected without pre-charging, there could have been a big spark that might have been harmful. Although it's advisable to use protective gloves for safety, I didn't in this demonstration to emphasize that there's no spark when pre-charging is done correctly. All right, now it's time for a final check before turning on the inverter. Throughout this discussion, we focused on capacitor pre-charging in a 48 volt system. However, if your system operates at 24 volts or 12 volts, you can still apply a similar method. If the inverter is 24 volts, you can use a 24 volts vehicle headlight. And for a 12 volts inverter, a 12 volts car headlight is suitable. It's essential to note that bulbs with filaments are necessary for this procedure. Using LED, CFL, or other types of bulbs will not yield the same results. Thank you for watching the video. I'm confident you've gained the knowledge needed to pre charge the capacitors in your off grid inverter before connecting the batteries. We'll see you again with more informative content. Until then, stay safe and stay powered.